All right, let's get started. Um, I want to go through this part very briefly because I want to. Um, do you have a question? Please enjoy the in, in your own world, right? Yeah. Okay, don't worry, I'll pull it back up. All right, um, so I want to go through a couple things. I want to go through the second traverse, but I also want to go through the requirements for next week's exam, okay? Because there are going to be some things that are a little different in the field exam that are primarily to make the exam go faster, okay? So I want to explain that, okay? But just to make sure we're all on the same page, so what we're going to be doing is another four-point traverse, but we're doing it in Buskirk. We're not doing it in Gullickson Field. So it's a little closer. Um, so what you're going to do, just like last time, you're going to set up a turning point one. You're going to do uh, a resection to establish the coordinates of turning point one, as well as the uh, orientation of your instrument. You're going to backsight the nail, uh, exterior angle to turning point four, and then now you're in traverse mode. Backside turn foresight and set up at two. Backside turn foresight, set up at three. Backside turn foresight, set up at four. Backside turn foresight. So remember, every interior angle is measured once, every distance is measured twice. Unlike last week, you're doing the whole traverse start to finish from a calculation perspective today. Now that everybody knows how to do it from, from what we did in class. Okay? So um, just to make sure we're all on the same page, um, we've got. Uh, Control points in Buskirk Field. Uh, unlike last time when we were in Buskirk, I said you had to use um, three specific nails because I did a lot of the math for you. For this week, you can use any three nails. And I, and I said that last week, and what happened was everybody went and still used 2021 20, and 22, and it still created a log jam. So you can do it in different orders, right? The resection, that's not a problem. So just, you know, don't, don't, you know, uh, wedge yourself into a specific set of nails because you can make the life go a little faster. Uh, and you can communicate with your groups you know, as to how you're going to do that. Um, there's 10, 11, 12, 13. We all have nail or our flags next to all these so you all know where those are at. Whenever you're taking your angular measurements inside your traverse, um, make sure that when you do your backside, you set the angle to zero before you turn. Make sure you are always turning to the right uh, whenever you perform your uh, angular measurements. Okay, we've done we've done that before. Distance measurements. When you hit the all button, it does all three. Uh, we only need the horizontal distances, so make sure you're only recording the one with the horizontal symbol uh, uh, in your field notes. Okay. Um, Whenever you set up your uh, field notes, so all the points are essentially the same except for turning point one. And what makes turning point one different is that you've got the turning point one coordinates, you've got the azimuth from the turning point to the last nail, and you have the exterior angle from that nail to TP4 to set up orientation for your traverse. Make sense? Okay, so now that we've done a traverse once before last week, hopefully this week we'll go a little faster. For the remaining instrument setups, all you've got is the height of the instrument, the height of the rod, and then backside angle foresight. HI, HR, and backside angle foresight. That's all you have for your uh, for your final setups. So when it's all said and done, the field notes should look something like this. Um, uh, any questions on that? Okay. All right. I want to talk a little bit about the uh, exam next week, um, and just to make sure it's clear. Um, so. The laboratory grade uh, accounts for 30% of your grade in the class, and the way that we compute the, um, the, the exams is all the labs average out to 70% of your lab grade, and then 15% was from lab exam one, and another 15% is from lab exam two. Okay? So you do the math, it's like 4.5% of your grade in the class. So it's not like a massive component of your class grade. I mean, it's, it's got a little bit of weight to it, but not substantial. Okay, here's what's going to be different about lab exam two, so I want everybody to pay attention to this. Okay, you all probably recognize from the uh, traverse last week that one of the things that makes the traverse difficult or take long is the resection, right? That's, that actually takes a while, right? Doing the resection at uh, turning point one. But what is the purpose of the resection? The purpose of the resection is to do two things to establish the coordinates of your first turning point and the orientation of your instrument. Okay, So we're going to do that a little easier for the lab exam. What we're going to do is you're going to do a four-point traverse, 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the coordinates of turning point one. I'm just going to tell you we're just going to assume 7,000, 7,000. And for the azimuth, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set up a target in the field like this. Okay, You're going to sight the target, set the angle to zero. Done. Okay, And the target is going to be close to north. Okay, I'm going to set that about as close to north as possible. Doing it this way, every group is going to be a little bit rotated, but it's not really a big deal from the calculation standpoint. But that, instead of doing the resection, all you have to do is, again, set up a turning point one, sight the target, set the angle to zero, and you can rock and roll with your trappers. Back sight, angle foresight, back sight, angle foresight, et cetera. Make sense? All right, any questions? Okay. Don't forget we've got to have that exterior angle to the last turning point so that you're, you've got your orientation set up. Okay. So far, so good? All right. Okay. For the uh, uh, exam, okay, each group is going to be assigned a group of nails akin to how we've done the traverses last time. So uh, group one might have the orange nails, group two might have the green nails. And so you'll do the, um, uh, the traverse the same way that you've done it before. Just remember that you're going to assume the coordinates of TP1 and you're going to uh, set your orientation by uh, setting the, um, uh, uh, the, the target azimuth to zero. Uh, you can't communicate between your groups, and I'm not going to answer any questions during the exam. Um, you are permitted to do the measurements multiple times, and done properly, you should be measuring the distances twice. Um, you're going to submit your notes and you know calculations like this. That's what you're going to submit at the end. Uh, in terms of your grade, so if you remember from the leveling exam, there was a component that went into the closure error. There's going to be a component that goes into closure error on this one as well. But your closure error is going to be based on the angles, not the distances. Okay. So if your closure angle is, if your closure is less than 15 minutes, then you get full credit. If it's essentially between 15 minutes and 30 minutes, you get half credit. If it's over 30 minutes, you get no credit. Okay. Uh, which should be feasible. I mean, most of the groups in the last week's lab, which was the first time you did the Traverse, were getting closures of like 40 seconds or 20 seconds. And so I'm saying that if you get an error of 15 minutes or less, then you're fine. Okay? Does that make sense? So, and then the rest of the calculation, or the rest of the grades based on the logbook, the calculations, all that stuff. Okay? Make sense? All right, does anybody have any questions on that? Okay, uh, let's see. With that, uh, I'm going to stop talking and let you all get to work. I will turn off the recording.